Welcome to the first episode of the D45 Tech Talk. I am your host and instructional technology coach, Matt Granger. And in this, these Tech Talks, we'll do uh, you know, a, a brief five to seven minute video uh, about some technology application, a way that to use technology, app reviews, um, and um, sorry, I'm trying to produce and star in the show at the same time. Which, if anyone wants to help out with this, email me. I'd love the help. Um, this one is about the smart board, using smart board and instruction, and specifically interacting with video. Um, I've been doing a session for years at conferences about uh, online video or using video on a smart board whether it's online or you've downloaded it um, even a DVD that you're watching on your computer that's projected up to the board that you shouldn't really just watch the movie you should be interacting with it I know that's going to step on some toes because I used to do it too, right? You, you've got some time there when you push play, answer email, grade a few papers, whatever. But once I started doing this and I saw the power for the students to interact with the content and how much more comprehensible it made it to them, how much more engaged they were with the videos, I couldn't. I couldn't not do it um, and obviously there are times when yes you push play and you're not going to do anything with it um, but for these you know educational content videos uh, I, I still say this is the most effective way to you watch a video use video on a smart board so we're going to look at a couple of uh, aspects to that today there will be several episodes uh, devoted to this topic um, first one we're gonna talk about is when you are uh, watching a video I know you like to hit that full screen button but you're gonna have to get over that um, you just some of the tools don't work as well on the full screen and sometimes the full screen works and sometimes it doesn't a browser will update and all of a sudden the smart ink doesn't work with it anymore so I'm gonna show you here in this first little clip how to zoom the screen in the browser to just make the video fit the screen so let's take a look at this first short video clip so what I did here to get because the smart ink won't work in the screen okay the full screen so I just do control plus on the page and that zooms the web page. So I basically made it full screen just so it actually works. Yeah. Um, that uh, that um, how hill is it and how it just freezes and then it falls. Okay. It actually keeps going and going that's how it gets So you can use Control Plus, that works in most browsers, to zoom the screen, and actually not just browsers, in a lot of programs. Control Plus to zoom the screen. If that doesn't work, there will be a, a view menu and a zoom option, and you just zoom it in, uh, usually about 150 to 175%, and then you just rearrange it so the video fills the whole screen as much as possible. Um, it's going to be more effective. Some of the tools that we'll talk about in another video uh, will work better if you do it that way. So why do we do this? Why are we going to interact with the video with the students instead of doing our email, checking email and grading papers? Well, the first and the, one of the best reasons is 
to increase student engagement, getting them involved and engaged with the content of the video. So let's take a little, let's take a look here at this clip showing a student coming up and responding right on the screen of the video that's been paused to a question that I posed. So what's this called then? This is blob? Label it for us in our diagram here. Pick up any of the pens, but hang on, let's tap that. So now it's going to write in white. So the video, you know, the narrator, whatever, they're talking, something is said, pause the video, ask a question, have students come up. They can write, draw, circle, point to with an arrow, draw an arrow to, <coughs> sorry, a little problem with my throat here, to certain parts of the frame, the video frame, and they're more engaged. So they're they're engaging with that content um, and then once the students have come up and you've got those annotations on there you can capture those annotations into notebook to do things with them later and that'll be another episode we'll take a look at some of those things so a student comes up and they've interacted with it and then as a teacher you then can sometimes, or another student even, can expand on those student responses. Let's take a look here. What does that mean, tornado out? We've been talking about this already, so it should be you, yeah. If you look at it, it's kind of like a strip, like an alley. And um, it's mostly, that's mostly where tornadoes happen because it's warm, moist air, and cold, dry air combined. Alright, so what's coming down here? Cold. 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 cold air. It's cold air, right? What's coming up here? Moist air. Warm. Because what is this area right here? What is all this area? What is all that? So as it comes over that water, right, picks up all that moisture in here mixes and then what's going to happen what happens when they mix before it doesn't just make a tornado right away what happens first it forms a funnel well, not yet right that doesn't just make a tornado the air comes together you get a tornado so what does it make first that it makes a Supercell Make some big thunderstorms, which then can create tornadoes. Go right in the notebook. Do some stuff with the water. Clear that ink. Get a little alley. So taking, you could see that at the beginning of the clip, that was right after that student had come up. Um, and then I used that to expand, connect previous content from the video, talking about where the, the warm air, the cold air is coming from, etc. cetera. Um, so expanding on their responses and connecting to previous parts of the video. Um, and then at the end, you'll notice that I went over and I tapped and drew like a box around the frame, captured it to notebook. Um, 
and we'll watch we'll have a video on that more specifically of how to do that um, but that's what I do with it and then you clear the ink and you go on with the video so that's it for this episode if you would like me to come in and do a live demonstration of this uh, do a video with your class you have a video that you're gonna watch uh, let me know email me mgranger at d45.org be happy to come out and uh, show you how this works with your students so you can see it firsthand thanks for watching this first episode it's a little bit long because of kind of introducing different things here but uh, hope you enjoy it and we'll look forward to the next episode